Welcome back to Finding Wendy. Well, um, did away with the green screen because uh, there are all sorts of effects that I can't do anymore, like this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And I like to use effects, as you know, to make the video a lot more interesting. So, not using the green screen. But uh, anyways, uh, this week I'll talk about my results and what's going on. And I'm going to be talking about a brand new video or doctor that I discovered in the bariatric world, Dr. Matthew Weiner, or Dr. Matthew Weiner, um, and talk about his video that I'm going to share with you, um, How Do I Prevent My Stomach From Stretching Out? And I'm also going to talk about my NSVs. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's first talk about my stats. Um, you may all remember I said that I was going to try and just weigh myself once a month on the 20th of the month. Um, so the last time I checked, I weighed, um, well, let's just start at the beginning for those of you that are new. I started this entire journey back in December 2017. I weighed 450 pounds. There's a picture. Yep, that's it. 450 pounds. And uh, I started my OptiFast on February 20th. I was 400 pounds. I lost 25 pounds with the OptiFast, which is a liquid diet that they uh, prescribe here um, to shrink your liver. Um, and my surgery date was March 20th, 2018. I weighed 375. Uh, last time I weighed myself, I weighed 215. And today I weighed myself, I weighed 213. So uh, I lost another two pounds. So I'm 13 pounds away from Wonderland, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, <laughs> but you know, got to keep on going. Got to keep on going. I my goal is to reach Wonderland by Christmas. Um, so I just went past. Uh, they're building a brand new Planet Fitness gym a block away from my house. I used to be a member of the YMCA, but I stopped my membership when I uh, had my surgery. And I'll update you all on my surgery surgery in a moment. Um, and the Planet Fitness, as you know, is 10 bucks a month. My YMCA membership is 60 bucks a month. So do the math. Obviously, I'm going to join Planet Fitness and start getting back into working out at the gym. And the nice thing about this Planet Fitness is that it's open 24 seven, which the YMCA is not. So uh, yeah, Planet Fitness is the way I'm gonna go. And it's at, um, it's just at the corner of Young and College in College Park downstairs. And it's a brand new, brand new machines. And and uh, yeah, I'm, I really miss going to the gym. I did enjoy going to the gym and I really need to work on my walking and certainly working on a treadmill will help out with that. So yeah, so uh, I've lost 237 pounds so far, 13 pounds away from Wonderland at 213. So I'm, I'm very proud, yes, very proud of myself and very, um, uh, very happy that I'm now on a healthy road. So um, I'm going to talk about my update on my hip. Well, here's a picture of my hip with my second hip replacement prosthetic, but third surgery, um, which, uh, which, as you know, just to, just to remind you all that I had my initial hip replacement surgery on August the... 29th I had no August 21st I had my second hip replacement surgery on the 29th because it got infected and then the third surgery was September 29th and then the prosthetic was replaced once again and I just got off my um antibiotics woohoo on Thursday so I no longer have this bag around my neck I'm really happy I'm completely um, antibiotic uh, bag free and uh, the antibiotics work. There's no longer an infection. The uh, wound is completely healed and now I have to start massaging the wound, um, the incision area, because there is a huge hard um, mass there that is the, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, the, where the stitches are. It's all hard. Anyway, um, I have to massage it to soften up the scar tissue. That's the word, the scar tissue, uh, because um, um, it's it was, it's a big scar. It's a huge scar, actually, and the scar tissue is very hard, and it, and it feels weird. 
And so, um, so anyways, I have to start massaging that and they have massage chairs at Planet Fitness. So I'll uh, take advantage of that as well. And so I no longer have antibiotics. And what the first thing I did when I came home on Thursday from the hospital was take a shower. Woohoo! I can take a shower. First time I'm taking a shower in two months because of the pick line that was in my arm. And I didn't want to get my um, dressing wet that was on the incision. So, um, oh, so wonderful to take a shower, to wash my hair. I've been washing my hair in the kitchen sink for the last two months. And uh, so now I get up and I take a shower in the morning and just back to normal. And um, and it feels great. I, I'm really, really happy that my life is now pick lineless and I have uh, just, you know, this is great. This is great. So anyways, um, let's talk about some other stuff. Okay, so the theme for this week, um, basically I wanted to talk about uh, how do I prevent my stomach from stretching out the myth and I found this fa fantastic video I'm going to attach the video at the end of this video uh, So you can all watch it. I highly recommend you watch it. It's nine minutes. It's fantastic and This the he hit it right on the nail as far as the whole myth is concerned because you cannot stretch your stomach uh, basically, uh, but he explains what happens and uh, there's some other great videos I'm going to share uh, in the next couple of weeks about um, the honeymoon period. There's it, it another video that I want to share with you. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to show a few props uh, here. I bought this fantastic pill box because I was uh, getting so fed up with having to refill my pill box once a, once a week. So now I only have to fill it once a month. And it's great because all I do is look at the date and it's the 16th today. So I got to take my vitamins on the 16th and that's a way better system. Um, because I must admit that I didn't take my vitamins at all during the period I, uh, after my surgery because the uh, vitamins were conflicting with my antibiotics. So now I'm back on my vitamin regime, taking my calcium, taking all the vitamins that I need. Um, and just to repeat what sort of vitamins, let's see, today is the 16th, all right, so I take out this one here, and the 16th, there we go, and, um, the vitamins that I take are a multivitamin with iron, um, I'm still taking this pill, this red pill here is basically, um, replenishing my red blood cells because uh, I lost so much blood after three surgeries that my hemoglobin is still qu quite on, on the low side. I take my vitamin B12, I take vitamin C, I take glucosamine, and I take a probiotic. And then at night, I take my calcium with vitamin D. So that I do every day, and uh, these uh, pill boxes certainly help out with uh, reminding me what if I took my vitamins or not, and I put them here at my desk. I don't leave them in the bathroom. I have them here at my desk, and I take them with my um, daily um, um, smoothie. Uh, lately, I've been having smoothies for lunch. So like a fruit smoothie with protein powder that I have for lunch. And I find that uh, fills me up and uh, is healthy and it helps with swallowing the pills. Um, yeah, so I was going to talk about my NSVs. So I have lots of great uh, NSVs and I have my um, uh, agenda, day book, whatever, that I write in every day with... Um, um, highlights and milestones and things like that. And, um, I highly recommend this one. It's great. It's, uh, I got it at, um, chapters indigo. So, uh, some NSVs, some great NSVs are, I can now finally tie laces on shoes. So when I put on my shoes, I can just sit on a chair and bend over and I can tie up my shoes. So in celebration, I bought a pair of running shoes that I can actually tie up because for the last 10 years, I've only worn shoes that I slip into like Vans. I love my Vans and uh, they're great and comfortable, but I also like other shoes that you have to use laces. So now I can tie up my shoes, which is a great NSV. Another NSV is that I can put on my socks so I can actually lift my leg up onto my knee 
and I can put on my socks and I can lift up both legs. There's no way it could have lifted up my left leg that has the new, that had the old hip, the old broken hip. And um, so now I can lift up both legs and I can put on my socks. I can cross my legs. So here's a picture. I actually can cross my legs now, uh, which is a great, great NSV. I am now size 20. So I bought some jeans in a size 20 which is great, and um, I can walk around the house without a cane. So that's an NSV. So I'm trying to continue on with the exercises I need to do post-surgery, uh, post-hip post, post -hip surgery. I do my, my, my exercises every day and try and build up the strength and not walk like a penguin. I still walk like a penguin, waddle, 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 but I'm trying to uh, work on that. And... Um, I have my steps app in my phone and yesterday you can see as a picture I walked 5,000 steps which is huge it's that's that's a huge amount of steps for me because normally I'm about a thousand so um, I started working again at the Canadian Opera Company I work at the call center in the Canadian Opera Company at night and every night I'm trying to park my car a little bit further from the Canadian Opera Company administrative building, which is uh, down on Front Street, Front and Parliament. So every night I try and park a little bit further and walk uh, as much as I can to, uh, to work. And um, unfortunately, Toronto has been hit by winter super early this year. Uh, we have about 10 centimeters of snow on the ground, and right now it's minus 3. Last night it went down to minus 12, and um, so we have a very early winter. I would otherwise, uh, you know, try and walk to work, but it's too cold. It's just too cold. So, you know, um, just uh, taking the car and working at night um, at the COC, and that's great. And speaking of driving, I no longer have pain when I drive because I have this huge bottle of Tylenol in the car in the dashboard. <clears throat> and so when I, I used to drive, I had to take some Tylenol because the angle of the chair was so painful on my old hip that, um, that I couldn't drive for very long without being in excruciating pain. And now I'm pain free when I drive, which is really neat. Uh, because uh, very soon I'll be visiting my sister who lives uh, three hours east of Toronto in Napanee and uh, it will be a pain-free drive and I also will visit my niece who lives in Kingston which is like a four-hour drive from uh, Toronto east and uh, east of Toronto and um, that will be pain-free as well so that's cool uh, this morning, brand new NSV, I no longer have to sit on a shower chair to take a shower. So this morning, I actually stood and took my shower, which is unheard of in the last 10 years. I've been sitting on a shower chair, and also I stand when I dry myself, because uh, I used to just put the chair, shower chair in my... Uh, in the area of the bathroom where I just finished taking a shower and I would sit on the chair to dry myself and now I don't have to do that either. So yeah, that's all due to uh, this new hip that I am no longer in pain standing. So um, those are so those are some significant NSVs that I have experienced in the last, the last week or two and um, really... Um, happy that uh, things are progressing now faster so stay tuned and we'll talk a little bit more yeah so lastly i wanted to talk about this video about uh stretching your, out your stomach uh with dr weiner or dr weiner however you pronounce it and um yeah talk about my own eating habits um now i've noticed that i've been eating a lot more snack foods i've been having some chocolate i've been having some um, chips and things like that but I'm always looking for a healthy version of a chip so for example yeah so I'm always looking for like a healthier uh, version of a, of a um, healthy snack and I like to have a snack when I come home from work and I watch an hour or two of TV I've downloaded the new Apple Plus TV and I'm totally addicted to this new show called The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston so, for example, I just picked up this um, bag at the uh, grocery store, 
and um, as you can see from the nutritional uh, thing, it's 140 calories for the entire bag. Although the carbs are high at 31%, and then there's a protein at four grams. And yeah, so it's a, it's a healthy snack, and you can finish the bag and not worry that, oh my God, I just blew my diet. So, um, so that's something that I snack on. Um, another thing is these um, popcorn white um, white chips again. The whole bag is 130 calories, and the white cheddar chips. So I was completely addicted to smart food, smart food, and so I don't eat smart food anymore because that is a trigger for me. So, um, so these are one thing. The other thing that I that I um, suck on <laughs> at night are mentos. I love my mentos. And I, I have uh, like one roll and each Mentos is 10 calories. And then as my chocolatey treat that I have every now and then and um, as a treat for myself late at night is this uh, Cadbury Dairy Milk chocolate bar and it's 230 calories for this little chocolate bar. And you know, the thing is when I took the um, mindfulness-based eating uh, course, um, Oh, it was a year ago now. We learned how to eat these types of foods, but not go overboard. And so things like chocolate, things like chips, we were, we were taught how to deal with our triggers. So the great thing is, is that I, I've had this chocolate bar in the house for four days. And I, you know, I, I, I haven't eaten it yet. So there's something about the, the trigger in your brain. What's it called? Dopamine? that you feel happy when you buy something delicious. If it's in the house, the dopamine sort of effect sort of still works. You know it's there, but when you have it, of course, it, it's amazing, it's delicious, and I eat it really super slow. So, um, so what I wanted to say for this is that my eating habits have changed, yes, in the last few months because of the surgery, but I haven't gained any weight. I continue to lose weight. I'm not tracking my food as much with my app because um, I can figure out a lot of the micros myself and uh, know that I'm usually around 1200 to 1400 calories a day now and I'm still losing weight. And in this video that's gonna be following this from Dr. Matthew Weiner, um, he explains about the set point and I talked about the set point before. And so, you know, you need to eat food to lose weight is really absolutely true. And um, so, so far, everything is working out well and, and I'm not going overboard and I continue to lose weight and I'm not um, filling myself up on junk food. So it's certainly a mind game still for sure that I'm, that I'm really consciously thinking, okay, no, you've been, you've already reached your 1200 or 1400 limit. You can't have any more because once you go past that, then, you know, you, you have to go to the gym and work off a thousand calories or whatever. So it's balanced. Of course, it's all mathematical, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting learning how my body is going, is reacting to food and calories now and act, and actually reacting to carbs. I was watching an, another fellow bariatric patient's video. Oh, what's her name? Um, Minnie, Minnie from Tennessee, Minnie Me from Tennessee. And she did a whole, uh, I'll leave, leave the link below in my thing. And she did a whole haul on food and she posted her macros at the end and she's like way over 300 grams of carbs a day. And she's skinny mini. So, um, you know, this, 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 I kind of am not watching my carbs as much as I used to, but I'm still watching my calories. So, um, yeah. So I think that's about it for this week. I think it's long enough. And I'm really glad that uh, you're watching. And if you have any questions, just post them below. And please watch this video that's coming after this from Dr. Matthew Weiner about uh, what he talks and explains about uh, the myth of uh, stretching out your pouch or stretching out your sleeve. So it's really worth watching. I highly recommend it. 
So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Bye bye for now. Hi, I'm Dr. Weiner. I'm a bariatric surgeon uh, and I also answer questions um, from people who are out there who want to know more about weight loss or weight loss surgery um, or nutrition. And so if you have a question you want to ask me, you can go to drweiner.com, scroll down down a little bit there's a start recording button click on it give your phone your tablet your computer access to the microphone record the, your your question you can play it back to make sure you like it and then send it off to me it comes to me by email and chances are I'll make a video about it uh, so let's hear today's question about how to prevent your stomach from stretching out dr. Weiner I'm a big fan been following you for about four years um, about two and a half years ago I began my journey um lost uh, about 80 pounds prepping for uh, sleeve surgery uh had my sleeve surgery two years ago this month and i've lost another 90 so i lost 170 pounds total um right now and i exercise a lot um that's how i did most of it but i'm concerned now that uh, <clears throat> my uh, uh my eating habits have, have gone gone backwards a little bit and I've gained about to about 15 20 pounds back um, and I'm concerned about uh, my stomach enlarging again um, I don't want that to happen but I, I do find as I've exercised more I'm hungrier and I need to eat more it seems like to keep uh, keep my uh, strength up anyways what uh, what's the best solution to make sure that I don't uh, um, expand that stomach uh, again as I, as I move forward Okay, so how do you prevent your stomach from stretching out? This guy's been incredibly successful. What I love about this story is he lost 80 pounds going into his surgery. And that's awesome. I mean, clearly there was a lot of lifestyle changes before the surgery. And this is how you do it. You change your life first, then you have surgery. Surgery does not change your life alone. It can help. Don't get me wrong. It can really help for a number of different reasons. But there's got to be that initial effort if you want to get the most out of this sur these surgeries. So it also something that I kind of picked up on is it sounds like this guy is really relying a lot on exercise for weight loss, which is great. It can be very powerful, especially in men, but there has to be the uh, nutrition as well. So if we're going to solve this problem and figure out why there's been this 15 or 20 pounds of weight gain, why, why this guy can eat more, we have to move well past the original mechanism that we thought drove weight loss after bariatric surgery, which is restriction and malabsorption. Restriction meaning it blocks you from eating, malabsorption meaning it blocks you from, from absorbing the calories. So it, it really doesn't work that way. This is a hormonal change that removing this portion of your stomach or changing the way food flows th through your intestines drives uh, the weight loss and it's this change in the ghrelin and the leptin and all the other hormones that affect your body's set point that that cause weight loss after surgery and are responsible for weight regain so the first thing i'm going to say in terms of this guy's experience is what he's experiencing happens to everyone after surgery at one month it's like three bites of food it's nothing at six months it's just a few ounces by a year you're at a half a plate and of course this is going to vary from person to person but by three years and, f and five years, you're at a full plate of food. You can eat plenty within a few years of a sleeve gastrectomy to get yourself in trouble. This doesn't mean that the stomach is stretching out and you've lost the restriction. It means that there's this, this natural and progressive change that happens after surgery to everybody. And just because you can eat more doesn't mean you're going to regain a lot of weight. In fact, food moves very quickly through your stomach. So if you eat a piece of food after a gastric bypass, it spends like 60 seconds, maybe a few minutes in that gastric pouch before it goes on to your intestines. A sleeve we actually find causes a rapid emptying of your stomach, more so than people who have normal sized stomachs. So when you eat food, it goes into the small intestine more rapidly. So this idea that this is a vessel that you have to fill up and once it's full, that's when you feel full, that's a false notion. That's not how this works. So by the food moving through your intestines and your stomach at a different rate and triggering different patterns of stretch receptors, 
It adjusts how you respond to food and how you feel full. So we have to look, if we're gonna explore why people are gaining some, some weight, we have to ask ourselves, why is that set point going back up after surgery? And if you um, look at my new book, uh, How Weight Loss Surgery Really Works, in chapter three, I outline all of these possible causes and discuss what you can do to eliminate them. So a lot of medications. So first thing I would ask this guy, is you started any new medications? Look through the medication list, make sure there's nothing that could be causing weight gain. There's a lot of medications that cause weight gain. Food addictions. Have you kind of stumbled back into some old habits where you're eating processed foods? Processed foods trigger us to eat more than when we eat unprocessed foods. So if you're kind of slid back to, to eating processed foods, you're right. If you are only eating a few bites and eating a few, uh, eating half uh, a, a plate of cookies is going to be worse than eating a few bites of cookie. But when we're eating healthy food, eating more healthy food doesn't cause more weight gain than eating small amounts of healthy food. In fact, I would argue that the more healthy food, plants, fruit, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and beans, the more of this you eat, the thinner you get. Sugar sweetened beverages. If, there's, if you are drinking anything that contains calories and you've had bariatric surgery, please stop right now. You will regain a huge amount of weight, maybe all of the weight and then some. This, when I see someone who's regained all of their weight after bariatric surgery, there's, it's almost always at least partially driven by sugar sweetened beverages. This is the other reason I see uh, where people regain all of their weight. Um, Yo-yo dieting. Genetics can't do anything to change this. Pregnancy and menopause generally can't change this. Stress and depression. Are you managing your stress in the best way? Are you managing it through eating or are you managing it through exercise, through meditation, through going out in, in nature, hiking, camping, things like that. These are really powerful ways and they sound kind of, you know, uh, cliche, but they're super powerful ways. And believe me, if you could power, if, if I could take the, the emotional value of going on a walk outside in the fresh air and hearing nature sounds, if I could put that value into a pill, people would tout this as the miracle pill of the 21st century. But we can't take it as a pill, we have to actually have the experience. So if you're struggling with stress and depression, try to identify the most constructive ways that you can manage this. Exercise, an incredibly potent stress and depression tool. Altered sleep patterns, and then there is to some degree, in some patients, this decreasing hormonal effect of surgery, which can cause a little bit of weight regain. It typically is small, in the order of one to three pounds a year, but there is, in some people who, even, who do everything right can still regain a small amount of weight, and that set point can creep back up, especially after a sleeve, but also after a gastric bypass, for sure. So if you wanna prevent weight regain, and really, if you want to prevent your stomach from stretching out, which is not the underlying cause here of this increased appetite, you want to eat lots of high quality food. You want to avoid a sedentary lifestyle, avoid medications that cause weight gain, avoid sugar sweetened beverages, avoid injury. Injury is a major cause of set point elevation. You exercise too hard, you get injured, you're laid up for a month, you gain more weight than you could have ever lost through exercise getting enough sleep, and avoiding yo-yo dieting. So for more information on this, you can look at nutrition course number one, which also outlines these causes of set point elevation, or bariatric course number four, which is titled The End of the Honeymoon. And that's really what we're experiencing here, is the end of these honeymoon years after weight loss surgery, where for the first few years you have amazing control of your appetite, but that goes away. That doesn't mean you have to regain your weight. That's part of the natural process of, of life after weight loss surgery. Also, my books on Amazon, How Weight Loss Surgery Really Works, or A Pound of Cure. Thanks for your time.